It's time now to cross over to our TNA breakfast briefing. And today, the topic is the commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the Soweto student uprising. And uh, we're going to cross over now to Palessa, who's going to be hosting it this morning. So, Palessa, a very, very good morning to you and all of your guests. Well, a very good morning to you, and thank you very much. A very good morning to our viewers at home. Indeed, today we're looking back to 40 years ago during the 1976, the June 16th Soweto uprising. We live from Uncle Tom's Community Hall here in Orlando West in Soweto. So tomorrow, a youth day will be celebrated, but today that were directly involved during those riots. Let me welcome the member of the panel this morning. We have Popo Molife, the former Northwest Premier, who was a student leader back in 1976. And Dr. Molife, good morning to you and welcome to Morning Good Live. morning, May. Thank you very much indeed for your time. We also have Mayor Antoinette Sithole. She is a Hector Peterson sister from Hector Peterson Foundation. Good morning to you, May. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed. We have Ndate uh, Den Sichaba Munziti, who is or who was a Soweto student representative council leader back in 1976. Ndate Rawamwela Morning Live. Good morning, Palisa and your viewers. Thank you very much indeed. And we have Ndate Fanyana Mazibuku, a retired a science teacher at Morris Isaacson High School. Good morning to you, Ndate. Good morning, Polisa, and good morning to the viewers. Thank you very much indeed. There you have it, a member of, of the panel this morning. Well, you can also participate at home. Use hashtag TNA Biz Brief. You know, talk to us. What do you recall? Were you there in 1976? What are your memories of the day? And we'll also be talking to uh, ordinary people who are gathered here this morning. It's all about people, I must say, today. We are going to give ample time to them, you know, just to share with us their memories, uh, what they remember, how do they think uh, things have turned in terms of uh, what we see among our young people here in South Africa today. So that's basically the discussion, a uh, 40th celebration or commemoration of the 1976 Soweto uprisings. Let me start with you, uh, Ndate Mulipe, as a former 1976 student leader. What do you recall of the day? The, uh, Palisa, the, uh, the, the day don't as one where there was general excitement deriving from our determination to respond to the imposition by the Nationalist Party government of a policy of Africans as a, as a medium of instruction um, at, at secondary schools and high schools. And the genesis of that, of course, was the a decision taken by the Bruder Bond, which was an ideological think tank of the Nationalist Party, which took a view that Africans was no longer going to play second fiddle to English, and they were determined, therefore, to force everybody everywhere to use Africans as a medium of, uh, of communication. And therefore, at, at schools, they directed through, I think at the time, uh, the inspectorate under Strado uh, to inform the schools that on day X Africans was going to be a medium of instruction. And of course there had been a series of meetings in response to that uh, policy by the students uh, to say we're not going to allow this to happen. Um, this meeting, the last one of those meetings would have been on, uh, on the 15th uh, of June uh, at the DOCC in Orlando, if I remember well, um, where we, we said we we're going to demonstrate. Mm. There was this determination. Some people were saying, look, let's march until they stop apartheid. We, let's protest until they reverse their decision. But we chose to do it on one day only. We said, look, let's mobilize large numbers. If we have the large numbers, uh, and they can see the seriousness in which we, we reject the system, we think they will have a second thought on this thing. But that was not to happen. Mm. Uh, how did the march happen? Students were addressed in various uh, high schools. I was at Naledi High School. We, I had to talk to my principal at the time was NJK uh, Molope uh, to say to him, we are marching to, today 
please don't even come to the assembly. Uh, let us deal with the situation. You know nothing about it. We will march. It's going to be a peaceful march. Um, and we don't want teachers to be involved in that march because the, it would be sad that you are the ones uh, instigating mm. uh, your learners. But uh, from what I gather is that there was a sense of unity because you're saying that uh, there was a mobilization in all the high schools in the area. So there was a sense of unity amongst the learners then. No, there was a sense of unity and central to this was the South African student movement of course supported by organizations like the Black People's Convention and the South African Student Organization uh, and the National Youth Organization to, to make sure that there's coordination amongst various high schools in, in Soweto and there was that solidarity. I think immediately the message of challenging apartheid in position as a language, uh, Africans in position as a language of instruction, struck a chord in the hearts of all uh, the youngsters. And uh, there was therefore that solidarity almost instantaneously. Okay, now we're going to get back to you now. Mayor Setola, obviously when one mentions your name, what comes to our mind is the famous picture of Hector Peterson. Just take us back uh, on the day as to what exactly happened and how did you end up being on that uh, famous picture? Well, um, about that day, actually, uh, we knew very well that what, what was going to happen. You know, like, um, yes, there were messages uh, being passed through and we knew that on the 16th of, uh, of June, there will be a demonstration even though parents, you know, were asking lots and lots of questions because they could sense, you know, and see that something is not right, you know. Even though we had to lie to them that, no, uh, it seems as if teachers have got problems with the Department of Education, you know. But we knew very well that we are going to demonstrate, you know, because we really did not want to be taught in that uh, oppressive language, you know. So yes, the day came and we all went to school, so we knew that uh, there would be uh, high schools that would be supporting us because we had to, to resort to them to find you know, some solutions. So yes, we went through the street of Soweto with pride, you know, singing and chanting. And you know, a day off from classroom, and you know, we went from location to location, uh, collecting students because some felt like, no, we won't do this on our own. You have to come and fetch us. So to us, it was a blessing. At least we'll be sure that we'll have uh, more numbers. So as we went through the street of Soweto, and you'd find that in some locations, there would be about three to four schools in a row. So obviously, younger ones spotted those different uniforms. I think uh, to them, it, uh, it was like uh, we were having fun in a way. You know? So they invited themselves. And we knew that uh, uh, lower primary and primary were not supposed to take part, you know. But because it was a peaceful match, so we just let them join in. So as we went through the street of Soweto, at some point, I remember CAT told us that um, police are around, we must make sure we don't provoke the police, you know. But now speaking to a crowd, you know, it's something different. It goes near and comes out the other way, but even so, we managed to become. So when we got to Orlando West High, already police were there, you know, barricaded some of the street. And, you know, we were told that uh, other schools are on the way. We can just hang around waiting for those schools. You know, we were excited, you know, because <clears throat> while demonstrating, you know, we never encountered any problems. So to us, it was like, oh, this is an achievement. So while waiting, you know, and all of a sudden there was a shot. You know, we just ran amok in confusion, running for cover. You know, something was itching our eyes. And we were told that it's tear gas, we can just pour water to relieve pain. But it was so scary and confusing. You know, and remember, we lied to our parents, and that was happening then, oh well. It was something else. So basically you got surprised because this was supposed to be a peaceful march and yes. eventually a shot was fired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so obviously it was like we were taken by surprise even though we knew that police were there and we did not provoke them. You know, that's the other thing. You know, so I don't really know what happened. Why did police shoot in the first place, you know? 
And besides, you know, we were plus minus 20,000 in one place. So you didn't know from your east or west side what happened then, why, why did the police shoot, but it really did not make sense. Mm. I don't want to tell a lie. It was scary. Well, I can imagine what uh, I'm sitting here, you know, listening attentively to, to, to what you're telling us. But we need to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we'll be speaking to some of our members of the panel stationed.